And so I just want to show you how uh, Andrew Yang has kind of had it with MSNBC. So, you know, so if, I'll give you an example. So you know how bad they are. So this Ryan Grimm caught this. He says CNN has five articles up about its new New Hampshire poll that shows Sanders in front. Yet none of it, none of the five headlines on any of their articles say that. OK, for instance, they would say stuff like this. Buda gig in fourth, but a strong fourth. That's a literal headline from. So you get how. All right. And if yeah. he loses in the general, it'll be a strong loss. Right. You know, well, that was Kamala Harris. It was a strong drop. It was <laughs> a strong drop. So here's the the New Hampshire poll. And this is, again, from uh, November 21 through 24. They surveyed 500 likely New Hampshire Democratic voters. And it breaks down like this. Six, Bernie Sanders in, is in the lead, 16%. Elizabeth Warren, 14 Pete uh, Booty Care, 13%. Joe Biden, 12 percent, then Tulsi Gabbard, 6 percent and Andrew Yang, 4. So that's uh, a big. So that's a big bump for Tulsi Gabbard, a, a three point jump since August, since Hillary Clinton attacked her. So they have another metrics inside this poll and the poll is and the metrics is uh, what is your firm support? So. This just asks, who are you leaning towards or who would you? But who are you strongly, firmly behind? Right. So you might say, well, I'd vote for Elizabeth Warren, but I could switch. So they wanted to find out, well, how many voters won't switch? How many how many voters who support them are deep? Right. What percentage of their supporters are deep and strong instead of just surface and shallow? So this is what there's the question. New Hampshire voters firm support for the 2020 Democratic candidate. Bernie Sanders, 64 percent of the people who support him firmly support him. Joe Biden next, 37 percent of the people who support him firmly support him. Elizabeth Warren, 36 percent and Buttigieg, 30 percent. So that's what they showed you. Now, my uh, my friend uh, Hillary is a Saudi agent caught this. She says MSNDC has done it again. MSDNC has done it again. This time it left. Oh my God. It left both Yang and Tulsi off their graphic. Wait a minute. So here's the real graphic. It should have looked like this Bernie, 64%, Tulsi, 58%, Yang, 42%. But that's not what they showed. What they showed, they left. So it goes Bernie, Tulsi, Yang. They just left them two off. They just left them off. Too it's, bad for that 21% of Kamala people, too. They can't vote at all now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You know, it's almost like MSNBC doesn't want to report facts. It's almost like that, stuff. So it's almost like they're millionaires serving neoliberal billionaires' causes. Nice. That's right. That's a good so one. So here is, yeah, it is, right? Yeah. So here is uh, an example of them leaving Yang. They've done this to Yang over and over. So here's the... And Democrats running in 2020. This was in March. No Andrew Yang. Uh, this is from April. No Andrew Yang. This is another one from eight, late April. No Andrew Yang. Even though they were at the time they showed this graphic on screen, they were interviewing Andrew Yang. This was the graphic they showed. Uh, and so Andrew Yang has had it, and he tweeted this out last November 23rd. He said, I was asked to appear on MSNBC this weekend, and I told them that I'd be happy to, after they apologize on air, discuss and include our campaign consistent with our polling and, in, and allow surrogates from our campaign as they do other candidates. They think we need them. We don't. They've omitted me from their graphics 12 times, called me John Yang on air, and given me a fraction of the speaking time over two debates, despite my polling higher than the other candidates on stage. At some point, you have to call it. The whole time we've gotten stronger. This is actually bad for MSNBC. If it will only get worse after I make the next debates and keep rising in the polls, the people are smarter than MSNBC would like to think. So there's Andrew Yang giving it to MSNBC. Now, you thought it was just Bernie Sanders. It's anybody who's an outsider, baby. Uh, Andrew Yang's an outsider. He's also going to get the ire of the establishment. He wants to upend the establishment. Wait, what? UBI? So here he is. He goes on CNN to talk about it. Here we go. Watch this. I did not mention that you were also invited on MSNBC this weekend, and you turned down that invitation and instead took to Twitter to slam the network, a decision that could be seen as risky during a Democratic primary. Uh, we're showing one of those tweets here, which reads in part, 
was asked to appear on MSNBC this weekend and told them that I'd be happy to after they apologize on air. What exactly do you want an apology for? Well, Anna, Americans tuned in to the debate earlier this week, and they saw that I got called on less than any other candidate, including candidates that I'm polling higher than, and the questions I did get had virtually nothing to do with the core ideas of my campaign. And if this were an isolated incident, that would be one thing. But if you go back over the last number of months, MSNBC has literally omitted me from over a dozen fundraising and polling graphics, which it's not about me. It's about the 300,000 plus Americans who've donated to and support my campaign and the millions of Americans who know we need to rewrite the rules of the 21st century economy to work for us. Think about those people donating $10, $20 of their hard-earned money to put a candidate on the stage and then have MSNBC virtually ignore me for 32 minutes or when they tune into MSNBC to see how we're doing in the polls, it's like I don't exist. And you can go through the records, you can see they've done it to me over and over again. And I'm not the kind of guy who takes offense easily, but at this point you have to call it like you see it. Do you think there's a specific reason you're not getting the coverage you feel is fair on a network so popular with the left? It's a bit of a mystery to me, Anna, and I hope that when they come clean and acknowledge that they have been uh, suppressing and ignoring me and my campaign for months. Maybe they'll actually share with us what the rationale is. All I know is that I'm fighting for the American people. I'm here in Iowa. There are, uh, I'm going to say hundreds, I actually lost track, hundreds of Iowans right behind me, as you can see, uh -huh. who know we need to actually <laughs> work on solving the problems that got Donald Trump elected. I have no idea why MSNBC does not want to have this conversation. OK, uh, I have ideas. I have <laughs> ideas why they don't want to have that conversation. Uh, I'll throw it to my panel. Jimmy, at the very beginning, will you play it where will you play the clip where she she says something that would be very risky? I did not mention that you were also invited on MSNBC this weekend and you turned down that invitation and instead took to Twitter to slam the network, a decision that could be seen as risky during a Democratic primary. OK, my point is that it's risky to hold a news organization accountable for misleading the, their viewership. So what she's saying is, uh, hey, you better watch it. You know that it's the news people who actually uh, are the ones who influence the elections. They actually, you know, they don't report their news objectively. So if you actually piss them off, you're going to be, that's not good. She's but, saying she's that saying, publicly. She's saying that the tail wags the dog, that the, you should worry about what the news reporters are going to think of you. That's what she's saying. Because guess what? That's what they do. They worry about currying favor with the establishment news people. She knows how the game is played. It's Andrew Yang who doesn't understand. I mean, I'm sure he does. I'm, I'm, he knows how it's played. I'm just saying he's not playing that game. See, I, I will say this, though. I wish he would have went on air and said all this stuff he said. Yes, on go I, on I, without their apology and say it to their face. And say and ask for it. And and I mean, because, you know, that that clip would have gone viral. That would have been unbelievable. I wish he would have done that. And and I also Wait. wish he would have ran as a Republican. Oh, that's what that's I. That's what we were talking about yesterday. I wish he would have done that. I mean, You're right. Uh, because imagine that he would have been kind of like a Ron Paul in 2008, except it's, you know, over a decade later. And he's got this big swelling of grassroots support. And I think a lot of the people who have really, you know, been into Andrew Yang, I don't think they care what's next to his name, whether it's a you D or an correct. R. I don't think they care. They were they didn't care about Donald he, Trump. He 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 ignites a, a, a people who aren't normally voters, I think. Yeah. Well, and he announced he ignites people that are very out of the box politically. Right. You know, you can't really put them in a box. So, you know, however he gets in, I, I don't think people really care. So now you have this kind of tech libertarian guy going up against Trump. Now, Trump built himself as an outsider. Yes. It was pretty much nonsense, but he built himself as an outsider. So now you have this kind of outsider guy who ran against the GOP establishment and beat them, and you have Andrew Yang, a tech libertarian. The GOP has pretty much crumbled at this point. And, you know, if the Democrats could be overtaken by progressives, all of a sudden, like, there's a different face of our politics going on. Um, I Yeah, I, I wish he would have ran in the... He would have gotten so much airtime... Um, 
because the establishment's ready for someone to take on Trump, right? Yeah. That's what they want. So if he would have been in the Republican primary, he would have had all the airtime he wanted. And I mean, I don't know if he would have beat Trump, but he would have got more airtime. It's tough to say, but he would have been a genuine outsider. Right. Trump couldn't have ran at him as like the fake outsider oh, Trump was right. trying to be because yeah. Andrew Yang is an actual outsider who has ideas. And, and I don't think Trump would be able to hold a candle to him. Yeah, I like Andrew Yang more than I originally did. I mean, I, I liked him at the beginning. I just disagreed with him on his, his on some things. Like, I don't I still don't like the way he funds UBI uh, yeah. with a regressive tax and that he's not for minimum wage and things like that. But um, but, but he's a genuine he's, opponent yes. to have those discussions with. I disagree with him on a lot, too, but he's a genuine opponent to have those types yeah. of discussion with. I don't think he's going to bullshit me about something because he's getting paid to say it. And I actually right? yeah. so think he would. Go ahead. No, I just think he's very. I, I, when, I, when he talks, you can tell he's sin sincere and genuine, which right. is why I think people are drawn to him. Well, I just know that um, I look forward to him coming back on the show because we'll be able to have yeah. better conversations with him about the things that we really want to talk about yeah. at this point. Because the first time we chatted with him was just the first time we were meeting him at the beginning yes. of his campaign. Yes. And I didn't know how serious he was about running. And I didn't know. Yeah. But I also think just seeing his transition from uh, being able to articulate his position has become stronger and stronger every debate. So just like I told, uh, I wasn't close. I didn't know Jenk Uger when he worked at MSNBC. Like I knew him, but I would, I wasn't like. I don't think I had his phone number. You know what I mean? Like I, I had been done some work for the Young Turks, but I don't think Jenk and I'd ever really crossed paths yet. Mm -hmm. And so when he quit, um, I wasn't involved in any. He didn't turn to me for advice. And uh what i would have what my advice would have been was don't quit get fired right make a big splash invite phil donahue on the show and fucking when they cancel the show you get to have an article written about it instead of you know you just walking away and they're going to say it's sour grapes which is exactly what they did and um so if andrew yang would have went on msnbc and said that on air it would have been much better yeah. Is oh, and I'm it would have went viral. I mean, you yeah. know, it totally would have went viral. So it's not like, well, I took to Twitter. So it's like, you know, my online is like, dude, if you would have done that, like not a lot of mm -hmm. people would have seen it in real time because it's MSNBC, but right. that would have went That's viral. Right. That's right. They're exactly right. They bring them on the Ari Melber's show. What's it called? Does anybody even watch that show? Is that... That's not Countdown. That's no, like, I don't know what it's called. Anyway. Meltdown, I think. Is I think it's Meltdown because they meltdown are melting down Ari every Melbourne. day over Trump. <laughs> it is amazing to watch the meltdown over Trump. <laughs> it's, walls are closing in. The slowest moving walls in the history of the wall moving. You can see the walls melting. Those are the shrooms, Ari. The Ari, Those. that's the shrooms. <laughs> Come see our live show. We're going to be in Honolulu on December 27th. We'll be in Portland, Oregon. And then we go to Tempe, Arizona, San Jose, California, Sacramento, Miami. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all the tickets for all our live shows. Come into a town near you and become a patron or support the Jimmy Dore Show. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com. Become a premium member. Thanks for your support.